This video was brought to you by Nebula. This week it was announced that there would be yet another by-election in the UK, this time up in Scotland, due to the resignation of former SNP MP Margaret Ferrier. While we don't know yet exactly when this by-election will take place, we do know that it'll be a two-horse race between Labour and the SNP. With the SNP in such a perilous position right now, and Labour being so far ahead in the polls, it's a good time to ask whether this by-election could be the first indication that in the next general election, Labour are about to steal Scotland back from the SNP. It's worth starting by having a look at Scotland and who they typically send to Westminster to represent them. In all Westminster elections from 1966 to 2010, Labour had a majority in Scotland. Having a huge majority of seats north of the border has been incredibly useful to Labour leaders in this time period. Harold Wilson, for example, became Prime Minister for the second time in 1974. He, however, achieved power with a minority government, 17 seats short of an overall majority. The 40 seats given to him in Scotland were vital for him to be able to form a government. He went on later the same year to win a majority of three. Again, the only reason that Wilson, and not Heath, was able to stay in number 10 was because of Scottish support for Labour. This all changed in 2015, when support for the SNP skyrocketed and they took 56 out of the 59 seats available in Scotland, destroying Scotland as a base of Labour support. Ed Miliband's Labour were reduced from 41 Scottish seats in 2010 to only one in 2015. Miliband's Labour actually gained 15 seats in England. Their overall loss of 26 seats in 2015 was clearly mainly driven by Scotland. This trend has held in elections since, with the SNP winning 35 seats in 2017 and 48 seats in 2019. So it would be reasonable to assume that this trend could well continue into the next election, with the SNP looking to continue to dominate in Scotland. However, this is looking a lot less likely this time around for three key reasons. Firstly, the SNP's dominance in Westminster elections in Scotland since 2015 has been overseen entirely by Nicola Sturgeon. The party is now led by Humza Youssef, who just isn't as popular as Sturgeon was. Secondly, the SNP is currently embroiled in scandal, with the police carrying out an investigation into financial misconduct. As part of this investigation, key members of the SNP have been arrested, including Sturgeon herself and her husband. And thirdly, the resignation of Sturgeon has opened internal rifts within the SNP. The party backed Sturgeon and put their differences to one side, but the leadership election highlighted key differences. Differences that are yet to be resolved. These factors have had a real impact on the SNP's polling in Scotland, with their lead steadily dropping. Shortly after Youssef took over as leader in April, the SNP's polling dropped to the lowest level since the independence referendum in 2014, with only 38%. For their part, Labour has been capitalising on the SNP's decline, with them steadily rising in the polls too. Again, back in April they were only on 30%, only 8% behind the SNP. Since then, this 8% gap has been narrowing, with Redfield and Wilton polling from early July putting this gap at only 3%. With Labour doing so well across the UK as a whole, with the latest polling putting them at around a 20-point lead over the Tories, many political commentators and pundits see a 2024 Labour victory as a given. As we've already established, barring a whopping majority, for this to happen, Labour needs to win Scotland. This is why so many are interested in Labour's performance in Scotland. It's seen as a prerequisite for a Labour victory in 2024. Fortunately for those interested, a new litmus test has presented itself in the form of a by-election. This is the Rutherglen and Hamilton West constituency, which is currently without an MP following the resignation of Margaret Ferrier, a former SNP MP. Back in late 2020, Ferrier noted that she had symptoms of COVID-19 and took a test. She then visited a gym, beauty salon and a gift shop, and then got a train from Scotland to London and spoke in Parliament. Upon being told that the test was positive, she returned back to Scotland by train. 
When the story broke, she was suspended from the SNP, meaning that she sat as an independent. A few months ago, the police concluded their investigation and sentenced her to 270 hours of community service. This wasn't the end of the bad news for Ferrier, though, as the House of Commons Standards Committee recommended that she be suspended from Parliament for 30 days, meaning that she was subject to a recall petition. Almost 15% of her constituents signed this, above the 10% threshold, meaning that a by-election was called. Right now, we don't know the exact date of the by-election, but both the SNP and Labour have been predicting that such a by-election would be taking place, and have already started campaigning. As we've already explained, the stakes are huge for Labour, but they're also massive for the SNP too. Yusuf hasn't exactly had the best start, and losing this seat could be seen as another sign that he's failing as leader, and that he's about to oversee the wipeout of the SNP in Westminster. So, with the pressure on for both Labour and the SNP, let's have a look at whether Labour will take Rutherglen and Hamilton West. It's worth noting that the constituency has flipped reliably between Labour and the SNP in every election since 2010, with it going SNP in 2019, Labour in 2017, the SNP in 2015, and Labour in 2010. In 2019, it had a majority of around 5,000, meaning that a swing of about 5% from the SNP to Labour is all that's needed for Labour to take it. Some polls have suggested that the swing is going to be almost double this, at over 10%. Britain elects has suggested that if the election were to happen this week, then Labour would win the seat with 48% to the SNP's 37%. Now, it's worth saying that we've not even got a date for the by-election yet, and the significant campaigning from both parties is yet to happen. So these numbers are merely an indication of how well each party could do but so far it's looking very good for Labour. Only time will tell how well the by-election will go, but if Labour do pull this off, then it's a very good indication that their wider polling is correct, and that Keir Starmer may well be on track to move in to number 10. If you enjoy diving deep into topics like this, if you're the kind of person who wants the even smarter and more analytical side of these stories, then you'll really enjoy our new series, The Daily Discussion, where we cover a number of other important topics from the endless coups in the Sahel region, the Twitter rebrand, or the specifics of the war in Ukraine. The TLDR writing team hosts these daily discussions most days, diving deeper into a new story we write about, and unpacking the hidden details that they found fascinating, but that were either too long or too academic to make it into the final script. If you want to check this series out, you can find the episodes exclusively on Nebula. The best news is that Nebula is less than £2 a month and provides you with ad-free and exclusive videos from TLDR and a ton of incredible content from other creators like Johnny Harris, Real Life Law and Legal Eagle. Check it out by clicking the link in the description and make sure you use our link so they know that you came from us.